Hey, Danielle, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hello, Danielle. Hi, guys. Thank you all for having me today. We are glad to have you here because, man, you have paid off a mountain of debt. and You have gotten it out of your life, and we're excited for you to share with us the journey that you've been on because there's a lot of people wondering what it's like to get out of debt. So before we jump into exactly how you were able to do it, can you just say hello to everyone that's tuned in right now and let them know what you are all about? Yeah, so um, my name is Danielle, and on social media, I go by a more salute. Um, I am a part-time reseller, and I'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, and then I work full-time as a designer at an architecture firm, and um, I just started YouTube yesterday, so <laughs> I got to get used to this whole camera thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I live um, with my boyfriend, and we um, started this journey four years ago together. And um, so, well, we've been together six, but our journey started four years ago. So, yeah. So tell everybody about the debt. How much debt was it in total and what type of debt it was and how long did it take you guys to pay it off? Did it take you four years to pay it off or shorter than that? Okay. Um, so, yes, it started um, four years and one month is exactly how long it took us to pay everything off. It was $325,134. Um, so it was 300000 was the house. We included the house. So we started our um, debt-free journey with that huge goal in mind. We're like, we're just going to knock it all out at once. Um, I came into um, the relationship with more debt then he, so he didn't have any debt, but I had school loan, car loan, car was, let me see here, car was 15, home, I mean, um, car was 15, and then the school loans were 10,000, so just to kind of give you an idea, um, but yeah, we, we went at it um, full force, because we just, we're like, we're going to do it all. Um, yeah, wow, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a, yeah. And $25,000 includes the house. Debt house paid for, student loans paid off, car paid for, wow, in four years, and one month. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. <laughs> that is. So let's go back in time a little bit. You and your boyfriend had a conversation at some point, like, you know what? Let's get debt out of our life. And you all didn't, weren't just talking about student loans or cars, but you said we're going to do the house too. So take us back to that initial few conversations where you all even began to discuss the possibility. What made you all in your mind even think that such an audacious goal was even possible? Um, so it all started, I'll, I'll kind of go back to the beginning. Um, the first two years of our relationship, we were living in an apartment and then we took on this huge loan of buying this house and we bought a, or I mean, we took on a 30 year mortgage, um, which, they told us was normal. Um, and then it was like probably a month after we bought the house, we both like had an epiphany and we both had it separate, um, instances. So he was about to go, um, buy a brand new Porsche, which was $60,000. And I wanted an expensive wedding ring. And we were about to be, you know, like the Joneses and everyone else trying to live up to their standards and be like them. So we were about to spend all this money, including this house that we just bought. Um, and then he, his epiphany happened when we went to um, go pick up his Porsche where he had a check for written out and um, they, it had no backup camera. And he's like, I'm spending this much on a car that has no backup camera when, you know, a standard Mazda has one. So he's like, what am I doing? And it just hit him that like, this is dumb. I'm just throwing away money. Um, and then I had, I don't know if it was right before we had left to go on that trip to look at the car. Um, I was watching a video on YouTube of this girl who is uh, a minimalist. And uh, she did a video where this girl had lost her home to a house fire. And she said that she had drove by the whole building was up in flames and the girl was just bawling and her whole family was there and was safe and everyone was okay but she was crying because her wedding ring was lost and I was like I don't want to be that person I don't want to care about the things I want to care about the people in my life and that just 
uh, still gives me chills just to think about that. So that's when my mind switched, his clicked, and then we were full force from there. So. Now, what made you guys decide to do this together? I know that you guys aren't married or were not mm -hmm. married, at least at the time. So I'm sure that there are people that are listening or watching and they're like, wait, you did this with your boyfriend. Yeah. What made you guys take that approach prior to marriage? Um, I, we made the goal. I know. Um, so we followed Dave Ramsey's plan, except for that part. Um, he wouldn't have liked that part that we're not married yet. But I wanted us to be debt free before we got married. So that was the goal. Um, we achieved that. And then um, I'll talk about why we're not married yet um, in, in a little bit later on. But um, yeah, so that was our goal was to push through this together. We were both um, savers, which I've been listening to you guys for a while now, and I haven't heard any couple say they're both savers. So I think no, that's that new. really, really that's helped. Yeah, we, have, we had a couple. We're both. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. must, oh, Maybe wow. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that really, really helps when you're both in that mindset um, to jump on it. So talk about the first steps that you guys took now that you all decided, hey, we're going to, you know, get out of debt and we're also going to pay off this mortgage. Talk about the first steps that you all took to make that happen. So I think the the very first thing was saying no to those big items that we were about to spend money on what one of those would have been the wedding and we decided just to hold off on that um and then um the next thing was to live on less than we made so from the day that we started this which was you know four years ago in one month we have lived on the same amount ever since so any raise um promotion any extra income we made it's like it, it all went to the house, so it didn't exist. So that's the mindset that we took. And then I kind of started finding ways that you could um, buy stuff cheaper, which was Goodwill in like um, yard sales. I didn't even know that exists. I know it's dumb, but I had no idea that that was a thing. But I could find, you know, when I when we needed clothes, for example, we would wait till there were like holes in them. And then I would be like, okay, now it's time to go get something um, new to wear. But I mean, we were so strict about it. And not everybody has to be that way. We just, that's how we are. <laughs> so I know one of the things that you said that you all did was you learned about reselling. So talk about how you learned about it and how you used it to aid you all in the process of becoming debt free? Yeah, so um, I had never even stepped foot in a Goodwill before. And a guy at work, um, actually, I, I was at a yard sale looking at, um, just kind of looking around and I ran into a guy from work and I was like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I am a reseller. I buy stuff at yard sales and sell it on eBay. And I was like, really? Um, then I went back to work the next day and I was asking more about it because I was like, okay, maybe I can use this to speed up the process. Cause if we can knock out, you know, 10,000 or the $15,000 loan, it makes it a lot more, it makes it a little bit, you know, less stressful as that huge chunk of money. If I can knock one of these out. So, um, I had found just through research on YouTube, I found, um, Poshmark and I ended up getting on Poshmark and started selling there and within a year I had one of those loans knocked out so it's just I started with just selling stuff in my home like they um, stuff we had sitting around we watched that minimal minimalist video so I was just pulling stuff out as quickly as possible and it just started selling and I've done it ever since but now the thing that I do differently is I go to like a Goodwill or a Goodwill outlet where you pay by the pound and I buy a bunch of stuff and then essentially sell the clothing online. Wow. So you, I've heard of Poshmark before. It's a clothing and what is it? Accessories that you can sell? Yeah. Clothing, accessories, handbags, stuff like that. And home decor is now at wow. Now give everybody a, uh, you know, a visualiza visualization of this. How much did you make doing that to be able to pay off a loan? <laughs> so I made about um ten thousand dollars my first year and I I probably could have made more if I had you know 
been real, real serious about it. Um, but I just kind of, you know, it was a part-time thing. Um, but to this day, I, I still do it. It's just, I think it's fun. It's nice to have like your own little store and you can, you know, take the photos the way you want and make the style of the, they call them closets, um, to whatever type of style that you want. So I bring in a certain aesthetic. So I just had a lot of fun with it. And that's what made me want to keep doing it. <laughs> nice. Now, um, is there a certain items that you're looking for? Is it a certain style or certain color? Like what's some of your techniques for somebody that's listening like, hey, I might want to give this a try. Should they just buy anything? Or are they looking for name brand items? Which items sell quicker? So it, it's a lot of research. I spent a lot of time on YouTube just watching videos. Um, and that's why I started my channel, my YouTube channel, because I want to show people, you know, teach them everything that I know so that they're not like me and trying to run around everywhere trying to find information on stuff but what you would do is you would look up an item so you would take i would start with an item in your home so let's say like a pair of shoes look up that brand um i look for higher in like kind of like designer uh brands um so i'll give you one of my best finds for example um there are the saint laurent the ysl shoes i'm sure you've heard of that brand um I found them for $5 at a yard sale and they resell for um, anywhere from $300 to $500. So those are some examples. Now, everything you find won't be like that. Um, awesome. But um, you would search a, another listing that's sold. So you check your sold comps and that's how you tell how much to list it for. Same thing for eBay. You're just looking up prices and seeing what it sold for. Wow. So awesome. were you uh, advertising on both platforms? You would find the stuff at yard sales, Goodwill, you put it on both Poshmark and eBay, or did you favor Poshmark over eBay? Or where did you find the most bang for your buck when it comes to these online reselling platforms? Um, I just did Poshmark. I haven't um, ventured towards um, eBay yet. It's a little more advanced. Poshmark's very, like, it's very easy to get started on. It's just the platform's really, really easy to use, which is why I would always recommend Poshmark first because eBay gets a little confusing when it comes to shipping. With Poshmark, you just, someone comes, buys the item, they pay for shipping and they give, give you a prepaid shipping label. You just print it off, put it on the box and ship it out. So it's really, really easy. I like oh, that. Wow. I actually like that because sometimes shipping can be so iffy and then you'll have to take on the cost usually like with yeah. eBay. You know what I mean? And that can cut into your cost or your profit. So I actually like that. All right. So any other tips just around this whole, because somebody's taking notes right now, like I'm finna <laughs> at all this stuff around here that I need to get rid of. So any do's and don'ts when it comes to being successful at reselling on Poshmark? Um, I would say do as much research as possible before you start investing money. Um, so start with any items that you have in your home. It doesn't even have to be designer. Just put it up there. Um, kind of just see what sells. And then that'll give you some ideas as to what, you know, people are looking for. Um, they always say to shoot on a white background because it makes your stuff pop up and pop uh, your stuff pop out. And it's like um Google Analytics likes that. So when you're searching, um, I forgot what they call it, but when people search on Google, they favor the white background. So make sure you use a white background and um, just mainly doing the research. And if anyone has any questions on it and they wanna get started, um, you can always send me a DM on Instagram and um, or write me a question on or a comment on YouTube and I'll, make a video on it just to help anybody who's has any questions and what's the name of your youtube channel it's at um it's a more salute so same as my um instagram and it's a-m-o-r-e-s-a-l-u-t-e -E. we'll be sure to have it both linked in the show notes of this episode are there any resources that helped you with selling this stuff like that online any youtube channels or anything that you can remember that maybe people can go to to find more information as well it's empty hanger um she is one of the top i think she started like um right when poshmark launched so she has tons of experience 
and she sells a similar similar style um, that I do. So it's a a good place to kind of start and watch her uh, what sold videos, so you can kind of see what people are buying and watch the most recent things because trends change. The things that I were buying a year ago may not sell as as um, for as much um, anymore. So what was your process like? Did you guys take this side hustle and any extra funds, like profit that you made, you just immediately threw it towards debt? What's the process like with this particular side hustle that you guys are doing? So we didn't really do the snowball um, with this. What I just did is just shoved it all into one account. Anything I spent came out of that account and I just kept letting it build up, build up, build up. Then once we got to the point where we were like at the very end of um, paying off everything, we just dumped it <laughs> on there. And then now I've just built it back up. So um, that, we, you know, we're, we're building our accounts back up, but we didn't do it the way 100% that Dave Ramsey would suggest. So that's why we kind of altered his plan, but everybody's got their own, you know, story and their own way about do, going about it so absolutely so talk about the process that you guys took you didn't do the debt snowball what was the process that you all took um so i guess the first one we paid off was the school loans so we knocked out the school loans first um and that was the ten thousand and then i think it was ten thousand right yeah yeah because the car was 15 um and then I slowly was knocking down the car within the five, four years. So that 5,000 came off like organically as we were paying a little bit more on it. Like we increased the amount that we paid. And then we were just doubling our mortgage payment on our house. So we wanted um, to get the big one out, <laughs> knocked down as quickly as possible. Instead of just taking the small ones, we just eliminated one. And then I was working on the back end on the car loan with the Poshmark store. So we knew that would eventually be gone once I had made enough from my business to pay that off. So we were just killing the house. <laughs> Does your credit score have you down and looking for solutions? You may just find the answers you're looking for with Credit Sesame. Credit Sesame is your solution for a free no-hassle credit score, credit analysis, and tips for managing your money. They are here to help you take control of and have the tools you need to bring about a bright financial future. Get empowered today. There's no credit card required. Receive identity theft protection up to $50,000 and discover a marketplace for credit credit and loan officers that will help you get to your next level. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash credit sesame for more details. I love that. Was that all that you guys did? Was the side hustle as far as selling things? What were some other ways that you all took to pay down this debt? Dude, that's crazy. The, the amount, 325 yes, in four, four years. years I mean, y'all were hustling wow. hard. Yeah, um, I, I think a, a lot of it has to do with, so, I forgot to mention earlier that within that time frame, I had lost my job. I was laid off from the company that I was previously for six months. Um, and instead of just coming back and just like trying to find anything and panicking, I held out for six months until I got something that was even better. And that was the thing that I would say is always look for something better. If, and if you can't, you know, change your circumstances of your, or your income, then you have the ability to, you know, go out and start something like, you know, reselling um, a side hustle to make your income go up. So we constantly found ways to increase our um, income, but then still live on that original income. So that's what really made a difference. And then not going on vacations. Um, you we waited on the marriage um oh the other thing that helped is giveaways um i entered giveaways on instagram all the time there's tons of them if, if you just search hashtag giveaway and i won um our wedding <laughs> so that's why we're not married because our wedding is this year <laughs> so you won your wedding <laughs> 
Yes. We, so I won the venue. Um, oh my gosh. Congrats. <laughs> thank so you. I was you almost in tears. <laughs> So wait, wait, were these all separate back giveaways up. that totaled everything for your wedding, or was it one giveaway that took care of your whole wedding? One giveaway that took away the whole wedding. Um, and what did you have to do? So they just had, it was a local giveaway that I was just searching um, on Instagram for. And it was um, when you're, win a free wedding, <laughs> that's what it said. So I got the venue. Um, two hours worth of, for, of a photographer. Um, let's see the, I had to pay for food, but I mean, that's was nothing compared to the cost of a venue. Um, DJ flowers, like almost everything. So, um, but yeah, you know, I just went so on. How did you win that? that? Did you have to submit for it? Did you have to leave a comment on that Instagram Write post? Essay. Like what's the, what was the process like? Tell us about these giveaways. So, I'm yeah. about to go into something. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so all it was, was, I think it just said to like the post comment, um, why you wanted to win the giveaway, maybe, or maybe it didn't even say why you wanted, um, to win. I don't even think it said that. And it said to tag three people. That's what most of them say to do. And I just did that. And they did a drawing like live on their Facebook page and they drew my name. And I think it's because not nobody entered it except for maybe me and a couple other people. So my <laughs> chances were high. Because that's what, that was my first thought was when you said hashtag giveaway, I'm like, I'm sure there's probably a lot of scammers on there. Like, how do you know what's a real giveaway to enter? Yeah. Well, this one I know is legit because I've been to the venue several times and scheduled it. So this one is legit, but I'm, they kind of look fishy. Like they're always will be like, um, win an iPhone or something like that. Then, you so know, what else have you won? um, I won, um, oh, ring. <laughs> so I told him, um, we don't need that expensive wedding ring because I, I've won one. And I think it was like worth a grand, which is crazy. But I just, I mean, I was spending hours on there entering, just keep, I would do hashtag wedding giveaway and just keep going. And then they'll, they'll just, they mailed it to me. And for as far as I know, it's worth that much, but it doesn't wow. matter. I just needed a ring. <laughs> so I, that is a creative I love way it. I love to it. get your wedding date. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God. But notice she said she put in the work now. She, yeah, yeah. She put in hours and she was searching and searching. And, and whoever, got, whoever these friends that you're tagging, I'm sure they must love you because you're probably <laughs> tagging the same people. Or a lot of people are like, oh, she's entering something again. <laughs> They're probably it. annoyed with me. I know my mom said stop. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say when you told me you want a wedding? They, I, I don't think they believe me. So maybe they'll believe me on our wedding day. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hilarious. Wow. Well, let's talk about that day that you guys paid off your very last, last debt payment. That mortgage. Yeah, it was, it was a mortgage and walk us through that day. Oh, um, so I, I guess it was a couple months back. I, I've, I don't know, it's just, it was just a regular day and we had to send, we had to do like a big, I think we had to do it like a personal checker. Is that what they call them? I can't remember what the, what they called it, but we had to, cashier's yeah, check. Yeah, that's what it was. And we had to go to the bank and then kind of wait on everything to process. So we went there that day and it kind of um, took a little while, a couple of days for everything to process. But we kind of told that guy like, we're, we're trying to pay off our, or we're paying off our house today. So the guy that was working that day, and he just kind of seemed shocked um, by it. And then we just kind of just left because it, it's like you did it, but you didn't feel like you did it because you don't have that piece of paper saying, okay, the house is paid for. So then after um, the next couple of days, we called and wanted to verify that everything went through and it was all finalized and that we were getting um, our paperwork to show that we own the house. And that same exact day, um, my boyfriend got a promotion. So it was just, I was sick to my stomach and I don't, I, it was just so much to handle at once. It was just the strangest feeling in the world. You just, it's like for this to happen when 
you know, we, we didn't even need it or expect it. It's just, it's just crazy. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Cause I, let's talk about, cause I, I read your post when you all uh, talked about doing it. How old were you all when you all made this happen? Um, so we are, so I'm 29 now. So we were 29 when we paid off for our house and he, he was 31. So, so 29 we, and 31. <laughs> Walking wow. around in a paid off Incredible. house. Incredible. Man. So I want to talk about what you mentioned about your payoff strategy, just for clarity. It sounds like you all took a blended approach to where you all did some lump sums and you all also did some intentional things monthly. Like you said, that you added a little bit to the car note and kept that consistent. And you all decided to double your mortgage and kept that consistent. Were those things automated or were you all manually doing that from month to month? Um, we went ahead and automated it once um, I had got in a stable job um, after, after I had lost my job and I was on and we on at another job, we felt comfortable enough to say, okay, now we can set this automatic payment up knowing that if anything happened, we can um, go back to our original mortgage um, payment. That's awesome. It's a, it's a dual, it's a double-edged sword. So you put some of the the auto, the um, payoff on automation and then you're still hustling and throwing chunks on top of the automation. And that's how you all were able to yeah. knock out. Man, this is just amazing. 325, four years <laughs> and one yeah. month. What did you learn about yourself as a result of going through this process that you didn't know before? Um, I think it's made me a, a much more determined person because um, now I know that I can do anything like I wouldn't have the guts to get on YouTube or something like that if I'm, a, I'm like I know what we've done so we can do anything if we just you know put our mind to it and the biggest thing is the research we know that we can find answers to anything um, online, uh, the internet, uh, you guys, I mean, everything's out there for answers on how to do, to do whatever you want to do in life. So I think it's just made me, you know, realize that I can take my reselling business further because I was able to find out how to do it because I wanted just another way to find money. So um, it's just made me a uh, more determined person. <laughs> so any other future goals, what's next for you? We know um, the way. <laughs> so next we we were working towards re early retirement, I think is our plan <laughs> right now. Um we are still living exactly like the day that we paid off our house. Nothing has changed. We haven't increased our standards of living. Um, I still do the side hustle. I kind of uh, cut back a little bit this year because I want to focus on YouTube and kind of see where that goes because I want to be able to help other people. And I feel like that's more beneficial because we should be able to hit our goal regardless. But if I can help someone else to do that too, I'd rather put more energy into that. Um, so that's kind of my goal now. And then hopefully we can retire not too, too long from now, not too, too early. We would be bored out of our minds if we um, fully retired. <laughs> wow, man. Salute to you all. Yes. For putting first, establishing the fact that you all were going to make this happen. Then you went out and did the work to make it happen. And now you all are on to even a bigger goal in early retirement. And so salute to you all for making this happen. $325,000 of debt paid off for four years and one, one month. month. Congratulations. Congrats. And thank you so much for sharing this incredible story with our audience. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me.